Hey guys, it's Kaler. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In today's video, I have an Adobe XD design tutorial for you guys. We're going to be creating a profile screen for an app design in today's video. This is going to be kind of Instagram-ish, uh, so it's going to have the user information up top and then separated down at the bottom we're going to have the user's content in a pretty cool layout uh, so that's what we're going to be creating in today's video i'm going to try to go into as much detail as possible of why i'm doing things so i hope you guys enjoy this tutorial as always the project file is down in the description and that will get you to the starting point for today's video so the project file looks something like this. I already have the grid set up. Today we're going with a two column grid with 20 pixel spacing. And then I have a 70 pixel margin up here on the top so that we can make room for that nice notch on the phone as well as the status bar up here. So on the left hand side, I have all of the colors that we're gonna be using in today's video, not too many. The character styles and the symbols are ready for you. I will also have the images provided in the folder. That way you can use the exact same images I'm using. They are from unsplash.com, so if you guys want some other great high quality images, you can get them from there. Today's video is sponsored by bookmark.com. Bookmark is a really cool and easy way to build a website in under two minutes. By answering seven simple questions, Bookmark uses an artificial intelligence to build your website right before your eyes. You can even create an online store if you have items to sell. So if you're looking to build a website, there's a link in the description down below for bookmark.com. All right, so let's get started with the tutorial. So we already have these two columns here and they're providing us with 20 spacing on each side. So that's gonna be the spacing that we have on the edge of the phone. That way nothing is too close to the edge of the phone so everything is in a good position. So we're gonna start off with the kind of navigation. So I'm gonna drag out an arrow since we're on the profile screen, we'll need a back icon to get away from that. I already have a box around this icon. This icon is from Box Icons and this box is 24 pixels by 24 pixels. I've just centered up the arrow icon from box icons in there and grouped them together. Then I'm gonna drag in a gear, and this is going to be for our settings so the user can access those, and we'll just align that right there as well. So these, since they have the same 24 pixel box around them, should line up perfectly, which they do. And that's also a nice trick to get icons to line up really well is if you put a box like that around them and center them up because not all icons are the same height and width. So that's a good tip. Next, we're going to create the user profile. So I'm going to grab a circle and hold shift, drag out a perfect circle. And we'll put this at 80 pixels by 80 pixels. Since I have the lock icon on, it's going to keep that aspect ratio the same. So it's automatically going to change the height value to match what the width value is. So we're gonna set the border on this to three. I'm going to apply a white color to that. And then in the shadow, we're gonna check that on. And here I already have a preset for you. It's gonna set that to five, six, five, eight, seven, four. And that's the color code. And then it's gonna be set to 7%. Now we're gonna change the Y value. So this is how far down on the Y it's gonna be. We're gonna put that at five and we'll set the blur to 10 just to increase the size of that a little bit so it's not too harsh. For the spacing on this, we're gonna align this to the left side of our grid, and we're gonna double the spacing of this grid. So this is 20 pixels right here. So we'll go down 40 from this arrow icon. So I like to be as consistent as possible with my spacing and designs. So I usually pick like 20 or 17 on the sides, but then I also throughout the design have like two to three spacing that I'll use consistently throughout, just so I have all my bases covered because you don't wanna use 20 pixels throughout because then things can kinda of look weird because you need to separate some sections with a little bit more space. So I feel like doubling that is a good thing to remember, so I'll remember 40 pixels a little easier. So that's what we're gonna do for separating out sections of content. So 40 pixels below that arrow icon. So now I'm gonna drag in my face image. Then I'm gonna double click so I can edit the mask and we're just gonna center him up a little bit better like that. So you can't really see it, but there is a white border around this. The drop shadow is just very subtly adding that. So that's gonna kind of separate this image from the background just a little bit more. So below this, we're gonna want the user name. So I'm just gonna type out a random name. We'll go with Seth Resbeck. And we'll set this to our first character style. This character style is what we're gonna be using for large font. This is 30 pixel Proxima Nova font and it's set to medium. We're gonna line that to the left because we're gonna position it on the left-hand side of our design. And I'm also going to set this to a black color. 
of 1A, 1D, 2, 4. So we're gonna put 20 spacing below our user profile icon. Again, keeping that nice consistent spacing throughout the design. Below this, we're gonna need some text. So I'm gonna grab the text tool and just drag out a nice size text area and put in some content. We're gonna set this to our paragraph text, which is going to be 17 point font, Proxima Nova and regular weight. I have a content generator plugin. So I'm gonna to go to plugins, content generator, and I'm going to generate a paragraph. We're gonna need about two lines of text. So I'm gonna delete the rest of this. And I'm also gonna set this text to 9999A5. And that's a light gray. So that's gonna separate this name from this a little bit. I always like to lighten my body text from the title text a little bit. So I'm gonna drag this up just like that. And on the spacing in between the name and the paragraph, I'm going to change the spacing to 14 pixels because 20 is a little bit too large for this. So that's going to be our third spacing throughout the design. So we're using 20, 40, and now 14. Below this information, we're gonna have a link to Seth's website. So I'm just gonna put in sethwebsite.url. I'm gonna set this to our third font size, which is 15 points, regular size font. And this is also set to our blue color, 008BFF. And we're gonna put this 14 pixels below the body. Next, I'm gonna grab a rectangle and I'm just gonna drag that out like this. And I'm gonna send this to the back, Command Shift, left square bracket key. And this is now touching the bottom of this text. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and I'm gonna click my down arrow on my keyboard twice. So that's 10 spacing each time. So there's, now there's 20 spacing below this text. So that's gonna give us enough white space down here at the bottom. So then I'll just drag that up to the top to fill it. So that's now framing out this entire upper section so we can have more content down here at the bottom. So on this rectangle, I'm gonna remove the border. I'm gonna set that shadow that we've been using. So I'm gonna go into my presets and grab that. For this one, we're gonna set the Y value to five and the blur to 10. So on this rectangle, I'm gonna set a border radius of 15 pixels. And then I'm gonna select this icon, which lets me edit individual corners. And I'm gonna remove this on the top corners, the top left and the top right, we're gonna to set to zero. So now our round is only down here. So if I zoom in, you can see the rounds, but up here in the corner, you can't see anything. So that's looking good. Now we're gonna to begin to put our users posts in here and our posts are gonna be pictures for this design. So I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm just gonna drag this out so that it touches the bottom and the bottom of this rectangle up here. You can also lock this so you don't accidentally drag it around. So I'm gonna hit Command L to lock that. You can either unlock that by selecting this or you can go to your layers panel and select the lock icon to unlock that at any time. Or you can just hit Command L again on it. So with this rectangle, I'm going to center it up to the artboard and set it to 14 pixels. So that's that spacing that we're using in between the text. And the reason I'm putting this here is now I can grab a rectangle and drag one out. And now we'll have 20 spacing on the left. And when we duplicate this and put it over here on the right, we'll have 14 spacing in between. So I'm changing up the spacing in between our image grid. That way it's not too large because 20 is a little bit too big. So we're going to that 14 pixel spacing in between these images. So now we can delete that rectangle. All that was used for was the spacing. So now these are 180 wide. I'm gonna set the height to 240 pixels. We'll do that on both. So now these are touching the bottom of this rectangle. So we're gonna go down 40 pixels. So 10, 20, 30, 40. And that's that large section separating space that we're using. So now on these rectangles, we're going to set a border radius of 10. We're going to remove the border and add that same shadow that we've been using with a Y of five and a blur value of 10. And I'm gonna select both, hold Alt and drag down a duplicate. Now, since we're using 14 pixel spacing in between these images, we're gonna to wanna to use that on the vertical spacing as well. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So think of this content as grouped together. So the spacing through these images needs to be consistent. And on the outer edge of it, we can have more spacing. So now I'm gonna drag in some images. 
I'll provide a few in here from Unsplash, but you can use any image you would like. So I'm just going to drag those in now. And Adobe XD is automatically masking all these for me. To add a little asymmetry to this, I'm going to select this right-hand column. So I'm going to grab both of these rectangles, and I'm going to drop them down 40 pixels, 10, 20, 30, 40. That's just going to offset that a little bit and add some character to the design. So next, let's add a follower and following section up here. So I'm going to start by adding 4,000, and that's how many people are following us. And I'm going to set that to our 17-point font, black. And I'm also going to adjust this to a medium weight. I'm going to hold Alt and create a duplicate of that right below it. And for this, we're going to put in followers. And we'll shrink that down to 13 point font and we'll regular weight that. And we're going to set that to the gray, so 9999A5. Make sure these are both aligned to the left. And now we're going to use our smallest spacing that we're going to use throughout this design. We're going to go with about five pixels in between this, or we'll go with four. I'm going to group those together with Command G. And we're going to take this grouping and we're going to center it up vertically with our profile icon. And we're going to put 40 spacing from that. Then I'm going to hold Alt and create a duplicate of this grouping and put 40 spacing. Next, we can edit this, so we'll do 127 people, and we're gonna be following these. Finally, we need a follow button, so since we're viewing this person's profile, we can follow them. So I'm going to grab a rectangle and just drag that out, and we're gonna do five on the border radius. I'm gonna lock the aspect ratio and set this to 60 by 60. We can remove the border, and we'll set that to our blue color. Then I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees so that it's like this. And we're going to position this on this right hand grid. And we're going to split the height and the width on this line created by this top rectangle. So with that, we can drag in a plus icon. And we'll center that inside of this rectangle. And then we'll set the fill on this to white. I'm going to select that plus, hold shift, grab the rectangle and use our line tools to make sure it's perfectly centered. And you can also group that together if you'd like. With that, we are done with today's tutorial. I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about why I'm doing things that was requested by a few of you guys on Discord. Uh, so I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you did in the comments. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you guys for watching it. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more design-related content. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, so make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.